Do you live close enough to God that the devil has to ask permission to take down the hedge before he can get to you? Praise the Lord. You and I are living in one of the most perilous times that I have ever dealt with. I'm dealing with people that's supposed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you bet your eye wrong and you are in the doghouse with them. Praise the Lord. That is a shame. But that's the truth. Praise the Lord. But the Satan... If you think Satan will not face you, and you think Satan will not come out and destroy you, you better think again. You know what the devil does? The devil will take everything he can take away from you. He'll take your health. If he can't get you in the spiritual realms, he'll come in and take that natural body and destroy it. Absolutely destroy it and put you down to work that you can't do anything for God. Praise the Lord. If the devil can destroy one person and take one prayer warrior out of the battle, hallelujah, he's accomplished something. I remember when I, at one time, when I worked at Outwood, I went over there and I worked in the shop at Outwood. And I went in there with all of these children are handicapped. And when I went in there, they, in the oration, they said, if you can learn one of these children to pick up a spoon and lay it back down, you have accomplished something. And I thought, my God, anybody can pick up a spoon and lay it down. I thought, oh, what are you talking about? How, why do you want to say them things? But when I was there in a, for a little while, I learned that they didn't uh, know how to pick up a spoon and lay it back down. And you could teach them over and over and over and over. I saw those people teach them over and over and over. And they never did learn. You know why? Because the devil had accomplished taking the mind of that person and destroying that person. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what the devil will do for you? He'll take you and he absolutely spiritually destroy you. Many and many a church and many and many a people today. The devil has absolutely took the joy and the power and the anointing of God out of their life and set them in a church and they sit there and go through the emotion and go through a form of godliness but never touching the power and the anointing of the glory of God. It's time that we stood up and was counted and said it is written, devil. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful or sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes, it is. I want you to know that Satan cannot destroy you if you don't let him in. Praise the Lord. Listen what he said. He said, If thou be the Son of God, knowing that Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights and was hungry. Hallelujah. 40 days and 40 nights, you're ready to faint. Hallelujah. I've never gone that long, but I went 17 days in a fast, and I know how hungry and weak that I was just in uh, about half of that time or less. But whenever that Satan came to Jesus, he looked at his weakness in the flesh. The first thing that he done, he went to work on his weakness and said, If thou be the Son of God. I want to tell you something. Satan knew that he was the Son of God. Satan had met him back there. Ah, uh, God, in the book of Job. Uh, hallelujah. Whenever the Son of God came to present himself, Satan also came to present himself. Uh, I want you to know when God's moving, uh, don't you ever think that Satan uh, will not present himself right among the sanctified uh, and them that love God. He'll still come in and present himself. 
You think he's going to respect you when he didn't respect the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? You think he's going to laugh at you? Hallelujah. And say, uh, they, uh, I, I, the, I, I'm afraid of them. I want you to know that Satan is not afraid. But you better have power, hallelujah, over Satan. The Word of God has promised you, I will give you power over all of the powers of the devil, and you shall trample upon scorpions, upon serpents, and nothing can by any means hurt you. Now this is the 10th chapter of the book of Luke, beginning at 17th verse. You can read this, but listen to what I'm saying this evening. If you think that Satan, uh, I won't come to you, uh, you know what he'll do? He'll tell you how pretty you are. He'll tell you what a great person you are. Uh, but he'll tell you, you must follow me if you want to be something great. Uh, hallelujah. I don't care how pretty you are. I don't care how ugly you are. You better get filled with God's Spirit. Uh, hallelujah. And the Bible said, be not drunk alone wine. Wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. You're going to face the devil tomorrow. My dad told me when I got saved, the night I got saved, I felt like that heaven had come down to me. My dad said, son, you better prepare yourself before tomorrow you'll come face to face with the devil. And I thought there is nothing that can take this joy that I have in my soul. I walk face to face with a man that I had told him if I ever come face to face with him, I'd kill him. He told me, you'll have to get me first. Hallelujah. Or I'll get you. But whenever that does, I come face to face with him, I could not use the power of Satan. I had to turn to God. You'll come face to face with the devil. I want to, I want to tell you something. Hallelujah. And one of the biggest weapons the devil is using on people today is this. Hallelujah. Being easy to get mad about something. Being easy. Hallelujah. For, well, I must not go back to church. Somebody can give you a cussing on your job. Threaten cutting your head off. Slap your jaws and kick you plumb down the stairs. But the next morning when work time comes, you'll be right back there. Hallelujah. You'll fight. You'll fight for your job, but you won't fight for your soul. Come on now. Hallelujah. You'll be, you'll get, oh, but I, I, I don't like the way they do this and I don't like the way they do that. I don't like the way you preach. Hallelujah. I'm glad that you're not the one that called me to preach, but God called me to preach. And I'm not going to preach the way you want me to. I'm going to preach the way the Word of God tells me to preach and the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See, when you run around with your feelings on your shoulders, somebody's going to slap you upside the head. Amen. Hallelujah. But Brother Walls, if I get mad, I'll stay at home. You, next thing you know, you'll go to hell too. It's time we realize that there's not just a heaven, but there's a hell. And we must learn how to shun that. And we'll never do that on the devil's side. Praise the Lord. People say, well, I'm not on the devil's side. I'm not on God's side. I'm sitting up straddling the fence. And every time you fall off, you fall on the devil's side. Hallelujah. I think it's time you begin to pray through and get your and get your mind made up. I'm going to heaven and I know it's going to be tough. I know it's going to be rough. I know, hallelujah, when a man goes into a, a, the ring to box, I, I want to tell you something. When he walks in that room, uh, in that ring, he knows that he's going to get hit. And he knows that they're going to knock his head off. And, and they know they're going to knock him out if they can. You better be now it's tough when you go in there. I want to tell you something. When you go in this ring to serve the Lord, you better be tough. You better have on the whole armor of God. 
You better be anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. You better be ready to fight. If you're not ready to fight, you're defeated before you go there. Satan will meet you there. Well, he won't meet me, Brother Walt. He's afraid of me. You look like Ned in the first read today. Praise the Lord. If you don't think the devil will tempt you, you know who he works on the most? Me. And people that pick this gospel up and go with it. He'll take everything he can and throw at them. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. You've got to be man or woman enough to be overcomer. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Yes, thank you. Did you hear what I said? He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Why? Because he is a overcomer. You think I haven't had to overcome things? Hallelujah. In the last 60 years, you think I haven't had to battle? You think it's all been ice cream and cake and pie? I want to tell you something. There's been times uh, when I went home from church, uh, I would say, God, uh, I don't want ever to go back to church again. Satan said, you have no choice. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Hallelujah. But somebody hurt my feelings. Oh, my God. They said they didn't like the way I parted my hair. Oh. You know what I think about that? I think it's one of the biggest babies in the church that's ever been. I think it's time you grow up. Praise the Lord. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm talking about being tempted. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, that went over like a lead balloon down. <laughs> but he answered and said unto them, now listen to what he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made <laughs> bread. Hallelujah. All Jesus would have had to say the word and they would have become them stones would have turned into bread. That's all he'd had to do. And the devil knew that. But he said he wanted to tempt him. Now listen to what he said. But he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you saying? And the devil taking him up into a high mountain and set him there. Set him up there on a, one of the big posts there. Hallelujah. Set him there and said, It's written. Hallelujah. He said, Now you. You, you, you just jump down off here. Because God said he would have angels that would carry you down lest you hurt your foot, dash it against a stone. Hallelujah. Come on now. That's the way the devil does. Simple little things turns them into mountains and causes you to disbelieve what God is and the power and the anointing of God that God can and the, uh, the anointing of God that God will, and we sit down and say, you know what you do? You know what's the matter with the uh, with the world today? There's too many pity parties. Hallelujah! Pity, pity, pity! Hallelujah! I'm going to tell you something. The Bible didn't say have a pity party. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. God knows that we're going to battle the devil. Uh, the Holy Ghost knows that we're uh, going to battle the devil. It's time that we took our stand and we took it strong and powerful and be anointed with the power of God. Amen. We don't need to back up in the corner Hallelujah. And say, well, devil, you know, you, <coughs> you got me now. No, he ain't got me, and he ain't going to. Praise the Lord. Listen to what he said. 